Hi, I am Tito Scagliano, and in this video I would like to tell you about some of the research we have done at the University of Ottawa on the field of plasma transitions. This video was created in connection with an article written for the Journal of Physical Chemistry and published in the year 2013. I'm Kevin Stepskowski, a PhD candidate in Professor Scagliano's research group and I have a special interest in electronic and optical properties of materials. So the last four years of research here have been a really rewarding and learning experience uh, where we've developed some methods for synthesizing uh, nanoparticles using light and these synthesized nanoparticles then display some interesting optical phenomena. I would like to tell you about three kinds of gold. First, the type of familiar gold, the one we think about when we talk about gold the yellow one. The other two kinds of gold are the blues and the reds contained in stained glasses. Some of these have been around for 500 years and therefore contain very stable gold in the form of nanoparticles. And finally on the well plate the gold, nano, the gold nanoparticles that we make in our own lab ranging in color from red to blue depending on the way we make them and the way they aggregate or what they have on their surface. I'm Catherine McGilvray and I obtained my PhD in the Skyano group on a project centered on the photochemical methods for the synthesis of gold nanoparticles. One method in particular, using Irgacure 2959 as a photo initiator, proved to be quite successful in the synthesis of stable gold nanoparticles. I also discovered an intramolecular approach with a reagent as simple as hydrogen peroxide to generate very stable metal nanoparticles. A few classic photochemical principles that were essentially second nature to the members of the group have now been exploited in the synthesis of nanomaterials. One of our favorite methods to make very clean gold nanoparticles uses hydrogen peroxide as a reducing agent. We can simplify the mechanistic scheme into simply saying that uh, the gold precursor with light and hydrogen peroxide gives gold nanoparticles. These particles, however, have the problem of being polymorph and polydispersed, many shapes, many sizes, some large enough to start looking like gold, as we see in the cuvette to the right. We have found we can fix these particles and convert them to essentially monodispersed spherical particles with a technique we call the laser drop, in which small drops of solution, or 10 microliters, are irradiated by the laser. We see the yellow color being converted to transparent, it would be reddish if we actually put it in a cuvette, uh, almost instantly a few bubbles of oxygen and a little bit of diffusion from the tube of a new solution containing the yellowish gold nanoparticles. A way of making almost perfect spherical monodispersed nanoparticles. Metal nanoparticle colloids, as in the vial on the right, do not display any fluorescence. However, small metal clusters of silver can, as in the vial on the left. When I first joined the Skyano group, I was given the task of determining the mechanism of formation of these fluorescent silver nanoparticle clusters. The two important discoveries from this work were that the photochemistry we use to form nanoparticles is governed by a proton coupled electron transfer which becomes very important in non-protic solvents. Also, uh, the formation of nanoparticles in non-protic solvents goes through neutral intermediates which is very different than in aqueous media where it goes through charged clusters. Following this original research, uh, we gained some expertise in making nanoparticles of different metals with different shapes and different optical densities. We now focus more on using these particles in novel applications. For example, the computer chip fabrication industry faces a dilemma that there is a need to generate smaller lithographic features. This is Moore's Law. But current technology is reaching fundamental limits related with the diffraction limit of light. We think that the best way to beat this diffraction limit is to not be diffraction limited. In a couple of recent works we have shown how the enhanced electromagnetic field around plasmon excited metal nanoparticles can be used to generate polymer features that are 20 times below the diffraction limit. The extreme heat released at the surface of nanoparticles by plasmon excitation can be used to do the same. 
In an unrelated project, the group has recently shown as well how the photophysics of methylene blue, excitation yield, and singlet oxygen generation can all be affected when in the enhanced field around the nanoparticles. The aim of the cover art for this issue was to illustrate the different effects that plasmon excitation can have, including extreme heating at the surface, altered quantum yields of photophysical and photochemical processes, as well as mediating redox processes that can actively affect the redox properties of neighboring molecules.